Crabb. That's the second caught by the Oxford Stroke Saturday Key. And if nothing else happens in this race, that's a record anyway. Still, they're picking up the strokes very well. But Cambridge are rowing well together and not a bit tired. I'd say they're at least three lengths ahead. Yes, three lengths at least as they shoot the bridge. Oxford have recovered and now Keith is picking up the stroke. He must be striking... Oh, stop oh, fiddling with it. Yes, a good 32. But I'm afraid that they'll never recover from their setbacks. They just can't close that gap. Oh, it's been quite a fast race. Yeah. I doubt if any records have been broken. What do you say, George? Oh, about two minutes over. Well, this race was even until Hammersmith. But then Keith, the Oxford stroke, got his first cramp. They lost quite a bit, but after this second disaster, they haven't a chance. Very unlucky. Keith is trying to pick up the stroke again, but they can't make any impression. Saturday Keith is the youngest member of a famous rowing family and is known as the undergraduate poet. His new there book, Bulbous Destiny, the has book. just been published, but I think he'll need more pull than poetry to push past oh, Cambridge's oh, destiny. Oh, yeah. Saturday. Voila. A success, eh? A sonnet. Keep. Oh, light as feathers from an angel's wing, sweet as true love in April's sudden spring. At your creation, genius stood at hand. Saturday. You missed yourself catching two crabs on television. My dear Matthews, this morning I was inspired. I invented a new dish. Crab a la Keith. First catch your crab. <laughs> oh, may I look? Going to read all about the race? Heavens no. Ben, though, you know the critic was going to review Barbara's Destiny today. My agent told me. Ah, here it is. What's the matter? He says my perch is grim and grimy. That, that it's out of date and ought to be out of print. The, the, the meter lips as though it had fallen out. Oh, sir, sir Benbow is a very nice gentleman, sir. He likes soups on jam. He's here tonight. Where? Over there. Sir! Professor Benbow, I am Saturday Keith. I've had the pleasure of seeing you earlier this afternoon, Mr. Keith. A very illuminating experience. Have you read this? Certainly, I wrote it. Words fail me, sir. That was obvious from the moment I read your book, sir. However, we all have a value of bad verse in us, and the great thing is to get rid of it as early as possible. Perhaps you would be so good as to tell me how you dare criticize a subject about which you obviously know nothing. Would you suggest that a priest, from long experience, is unable to distinguish between good and evil? I have lived among poets and poetry all my life, sir. And as a result, I'm asked to give an honest opinion as to whether a work is good or bad. And my work is bad? Unfortunately not. Merely indifferent. However, let us leave this distasteful subject. Would you care to join me in a glass of wine? I'm not one to bear malice, sir, but I would not join my worst enemy in a 1922 Burgundy. A very good year, sir. A very indifferent year. 23 or 26, possibly, but not 1922. How dare you criticize my choice of wine, sir? How dare you criticize my choice of words? Sir! sir! Get out, or I'll have you thrown out. I have also been slandered in the press by a half-witted windbag. Yeah! This... This is the last time I shall stand amongst you. Good shot. Tomorrow I go away to shoot big game. Shoot the blithe jersey, short horn or other ilk, who from your bovine bunty pourest pure streams of unpremeditated milk. Awful lot of bull, isn't it? Hello there. Where is everybody? I said, where is everybody? What do you want? We don't encourage hikers. Obviously. I want a room and some lunch. A bit late for lunch, aren't you? 
But not too late for a room. You can have 23. Sign the register. Not much trade, eh? No. Pity. Must have been quite a decent pub. Turn to the left, at the top of the stairs. Look where our Boniface expansive stands to welcome cheerful guests with open hand. Dryden. Tip suits. She wants it clear. David? Off. Yeah. Off. That's last week's. Well, what can I eat then? Tickle clear roast beef, boiled or mashed greens. What is the soup? Brown. Uh, tickle clear. Clear. Bring me a pint of bitter. Right. I say that there's Keith. Saturday Keith, the poet, rowing chap. There? I wonder who's up to when I come down from Oxford. Wendy. He looks quite old. Hmm. He went up after the war. He was in the RAF. Expect he wishes he were back. I wish I were back in the army. <laughs> Don't be absurd, Quentin. Just a minute. Look at this. When was your beer engine cleaned last? If you've any complaints, perhaps you'd like to make them to my husband. I'd be delighted. Oh, my son. Now, that's a really nice man. Got some stuffing in him. Oh, bags of it. Writes poetry. Frank? Well, I see above the front door that you're one crack lot, licensed to provide accommodation, food and drink for travellers. That's right. I've seen the accommodation. It's unbearable. I've tasted the soup. It's uneatable. I've sipped at the beer. It's undrinkable. There's another pub in the village of you're so particular. Yes, I am particular. The charge for lunch is five shillings. I haven't had any lunch. You've had the soup. On the contrary, you seem to have shared it. Mr. Keith, come over and sit at our table. Do sit down. Even if the food is intolerable, one can always choose one's company. Thank you. I'm Lady Mercy Cotton. This is my son, Quentin. How do you do? How do you do? He knows you, of course, but of course you don't know him. Now, look here. I don't want people like you in my hotel. Did you say your hotel, Mr. Lott? Yes, I did say my hotel. Then you're quite wrong, I'm afraid. It's mine. My husband's always buying me pubs. It's my hobby. I always say one must do something. Oh, do go away, Mr. Lott. If you don't believe me, ring up Cotton's Breweries. Now, Mr. Keith. When can you start? Can I what? You're going to manage this hotel for me. I decided that when I heard your views on the duties of innkeepers. But I've no qualifications, no practical experience. You're a rowing blue, aren't you? Oh, yes. That takes guts. And you know good food. When you taste it. Of course. And wine. Oh, certainly. You imagine that the late lot has any of these qualifications? Well, no, but... Very well, then. Quentin. What on earth's that? It's not a kangaroo, it's meant to be a pelican. You know, its beak holds more than its belly can. How coarse and accurate. Ah, there's Higgins. Where'd you find that chap? Oh, he was in the repulse with my brother Tuesday, and his cousin was in the ark with my brother Thursday. What about Wednesday? Oh, he's in the army. Kangaroo. Morning, sir. When the captain's round, sir? Very good, Higgins. How are your staff settling down? Oh, a bit slow at first, sir, but I think I've got them ship-shape now. Good. But don't you worry, sir. We shall be ready for action as soon as you open the house. Everything under control, Truscott? We're booking up nicely, sir. Good. Captain Brown. Come on, put a joke in it. Come on. Galley, shun. Uh, 
Ready for inspection, sir. Morning. Yes, that's more like it. Shaving very nicely, Higgins. Good, sir. Well done, everybody. You want to cry, so don't they? Just look at my stock. I know, Holly. Brewers do their best, but it's just the usual stuff. Yes, it's good rough drinking, but nothing for the train pallet, so to speak. Got some news for you. Yes, sir. My oldest brother, a son, do you know? Yeah. Selling with Andrew Seller. Cognac? Cavusia, mostly. Quantra? Kirsch? Kimmel? Curacao? Russian stuff? <laughs> Mask, eh? Probably make a mess of that too. Here in Downish, we have that famous old hostelry, the Downy Pelican. We're now about to pass it on our left. Why? This ancient coaching inn is now being managed by the celebrated Oxford Blue, Mr. Saturday Keith. <laughs> Good day. Uh, good morning, sir. Have you any accommodation? I should require a room with a bath for a few days. Uh, we've got some rooms, sir, but uh, no private bathrooms, I'm afraid. I was afraid of that, too. Uh, would you please sign the register, sir? Certainly. How do you do? My name's Keith. I'm the manager here. How do you do? I'm Van Buren. All right, Truscott. I'll show Mr. Van Buren around. Very good, sir. Here's uh, Lester, Elizabeth and Essex, sir. This way. What a charming place this is. So quiet and peaceful. You over here for long, Mr. Van Buren? No, I'm expecting you to call back to New York at any moment. My partner is a rather sick man. I heard my old friend Professor Benbow and his daughter Joanna were down here, and I'd hope to meet them. Much ahead. Thanks. There ought to be a law against men like that having children. Think so? Fidi et fortune, faithful and enduring. Well, you certainly had to be both when Elizabeth was on the throne. You know, these old rooms have a great charm for us Americans. A friend of mine had one transferred bodily to Michigan Boulevard. How did it look? Terrible. That's a very old and a very bad painting. If I may say so, Mr. Keith. You may indeed. The story goes that it was sent here by Elizabeth some years after Essex's death. Indeed. <coughs> you see, there's the well-known legend. That... <coughs> yes, Truscott? Her ladyship has arrived, sir. Oh, would you like to meet my mother? It'll be a pleasure. May I have this room, Mr. Keith? Yes, of course. Truscott, send up Mr. Van Buren's luggage. Uh, yes, sir. Thanks. Who are you? I'm a mate. Not permanently, I hope. No, don't go. I want to talk to you. I love talking while I work. You haven't been here long, have you? Long enough to know my way around. Excuse me. It's a charming hand. I'm a friend of Mr. Keats. I suppose a man in his position must have all kinds of acquaintances. And so many opportunities. <laughs> Ah, hello, darling. Oh, this is Mr. Van Buren, my mother, Lady Keith. How do you do? How do you do? I'll just get them to rustle up some tea. Oh, lovely. Let's sit here. Thank you. You're an American? Yes. I can always tell. Americans have good teeth and bad complexions. <laughs> and the English are just the other way round. Do you mind if I smoke? I like it. Thank you. Are you a millionaire? Unfortunately, no. Oh, when I was a girl, all Americans were millionaires. Made things so much easier, don't you think? <laughs> Do you work? Well, I'm a collector, Lady King. Oh, oh. Rent or rates? Well, I collect beautiful things. Pictures, jewels, tapestries. I sell the ones that have no personal appeal to me to enable me to keep the ones that have. Dear me, how fascinating. I wish I knew all about art. I don't even know what I like. <laughs> Thank you. Now, 
Milk and sugar? Thank you. Registration. Monstrous bureaucratic red tape. Ah, so this is where you've ended up, eh? Gone in for pub keeping. Very sensible of you, I'm sure. I must apologize. I'm afraid I was rather rude to you. Forget it, my dear boy. Paraphrase Voltaire, you talked unmitigated rubbish. But it's a free country. That's very good of you. Don't be so meek about it. Write your trash if you want to, only don't expect me to read it. In fact, I've made an oath never to read anything of yours again. However, I've come down to see this mask you're putting on. I hope you didn't write it. <laughs> don't worry, sir. It was written 300 years ago. Age isn't always indicative of excellence. Our local folklore expert, Miss Horsfall Hughes, knows all about it. It was her idea to act it here in the garden. Say, isn't that that American fellow over there? What's his name? Van Buren. Yes, argumentative fellow. Got queer notions. I rather like him. You might go and see what my daughter's up to, will you? She's putting the car away. She's not safe with cars. Hey, well, sir. Oh, hello, sir. Hello, Holly. A bit drastic, eh? Well, you've got to be cruel to be kind, sir. <laughs> No, thanks. Just finished. You're Miss Benbow? Yes. I don't believe it. You don't have to. It's a miracle. You mean that we got here? It is that we get anywhere. Father's unsafe with cars. Yes, a miracle. I see. You're not ill or anything, are you? No. Are you staying here? Uh, yes, it's my hotel. I mean, I manage it. Oh, you're Saturday Keith. Yes. I do hope you and Father aren't going to be rude to each other again. I expect we shall. Seems to come naturally somehow. But look, how did he manage to have a daughter like you? He managed. But you're beautiful. Utterly beautiful. You are beauty. Aphrodite. Helen of Troy. Cleopatra. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. Do you always pursue your guests like this? Ah, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. Her beauty hangs upon the cheek of night like a rich jewel in an Ethiopia. Blimey. Broad daylight, too. I maintain categorically, sir, that William Shakespeare wrote Hamlet. My dear sir, Francis Bacon undoubtedly had... Dr. Balderdash, sir, I will refute to my dying day the monstrous accusation of that lean-souled, mean-minded, pettifogging pedagogue Francis Bacon ever wrote one single word of the plays that... But what is it, Joanna? Daddy, why don't you and Mr. Van Buren have a nice little shouting match after dinner? <laughs> yes, of course. Um, Lady Keith, may I present my daughter Joanna? How do you, how do, you do? And uh, you'll remember Mr. Van Buren, of course. Glad to see you again. For you, Miss Benbow, with my apologies. Thank you. It's a very pretty gesture, Keith. A very pretty gesture indeed. There's Rosemary. That's for remembrance. There's, There's Fennel for you and Columbines. Quick, cross your fingers and wish. Shakespeare, Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> well, we must go and see about our rooms. I put you in the water rally room, sir. Rally. Rally. And you, Miss Benbow, in the Gloriana. Hurrying for George. You know that, girl. I'm really delighted to see you again. That's mutual. Do you ever run across David the Queen Victoria wrote the works of Tennyson? Oh, that Mr. Barrett wrote his daughter's verses. <laughs> oh, dear, I wish I knew who they were talking about. Let everyone write everyone else's poetry. Mm, so it seems. Who wrote yours, dear? Professor Benbow, don't tell. <laughs> ah, George, will you show the Professor and Miss Benbow their rooms? Yes, sir. Well, I'll see you later. Excuse me. Splendid fellow, Raleigh. Pipes, potatoes and all that. What a bed that Elizabeth slept in. Well, naturally. In the Essex room. Hmm. This is one of his gloves. They were found here after Her Majesty had been visiting the house, and the Earl was supposed to be somewhere quite different. If you look, you can see his monogram. I wonder where the other one is. Well, no one knows. Somewhere in the hotel, according to local legend. I wonder if she ever got the ring. The ring? What did you read at Oxford? Eh? Oh, uh, economics and psychology. A lot of pseudo-scientific nonsense. If you've been in any way educated, you'd know that Elizabeth sent Essex a ring and told him to send it back to her if he got into trouble. Well, he did get into trouble, and got sent to the tower, and sent back the ring, and didn't get any reply, and got his head cut off. <laughs> History told to the children. Did my heart love till now, forswear its sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till 
this night. Blimey, is that it again? Oh, good afternoon, sir. What would you like? Scotch, please. Very good, sir. Lovely afternoon, isn't it? Mmm. Wonderful old house, this. These houses of yours seem to grow right out of the ground itself. In my country, they mostly build houses that stand on the surface and never look permanent. Oh, that wouldn't do for us, sir. Tell you a funny thing. Whenever you see a deserted farmhouse in America, anywhere from New York to California, it's an ugly thing that you shudder at. But over here, a uh, ruined house is, well, it's glamorous. It's something you want to write poetry about. That's the main difference between my country and yours. Well, I just can't figure out what it signifies. Well, you know, perhaps it has something to do with all the years that people have been living in them, sir. Yes. Bet these old places could tell a tale or two. And this one more than some. You don't happen to know any secrets about the Pelican, do you? No, I can't say I do, sir. After all, it's not my line of country, is it? What? No secret passages? No priest holes? Nothing of that sort? No, sir. Pretty. I think it's wonderful, don't you? But I don't understand it. Oh, I mean, I do understand it, but it's not like you. What are the critics going to say? Oh, nothing worse than they said about my last effort. Yes, but... I'm sick of doing dreary little things. I want to do something really big for once. I may have made a fool of myself. Yes, but... I didn't expect you to be the first to say so. Oh, that wasn't what I was going to say. I'm all for it. Bigger and better, that's what I say. Oh, I'm sensitive about it. I know. Rather like a mountain might be if it suddenly produced a smashing great elephant after getting accustomed to ridiculous mice. <laughs> do you regard Baba's destiny as a mouse? Oh, blast, I've said the wrong thing again. Let's talk about something else before I put my foot right in it. Tell me, who's the new glamour puss you have here? Where did you meet her? In one of the bedrooms. Oh, at least she was in, I was out. I spoke to her and she answered, flick, like that. Oh, it doesn't sound like her. She's rather quiet, reticent. Like a shop window with one hat in it. Oh, you obviously haven't got the right approach. It's not your type at all, Saturday. Too independent. Oh, I don't mind independence, but a girl doesn't have to contradict everything she hears. Oh, she does, she's honest. People talk such rubbish nowadays. Anyway, this red-haired beauty isn't really... Red-haired? But Joanna's blonde. Then who's Joanna? The girl I met's as red as the Kremlin. The girl I'm talking about's a maid of some sort. Oh, you mean Nellie Bly. Yes, pretty girl, isn't she? Yes. Tell me about Joanna. No, you'll meet her. Time for a pint. Isn't Nellie Bly a ridiculous name for a girl like that? I once knew a girl called Emily Stout. I know, in a hill called Popper Cat... Popper Cat... Beer. Couple of pints, please, Holly. I've done it, Mr. Keith. I've done it twice. Both of them different. Blue cocktails, sir. Nobody's ever made one like this before. Not proper blue like this, that is. Mr. Keith, I'm an inventor. Why, that's great. Uh, what's the recipe? That's my secret, sir. Wild horses wouldn't drag it out of me. I'm quite right. Well, I ask you, would Marconi have told? Would Edison? Would Whittle? Well, <laughs> don't you tell him, Holly. It'll make our fortune. Four form, you'll try him. Very good, sir. You know, this is the only notable thing that's happened to me since I was blown up by a landmine. They're blue. May I have one? Two more, Holly. Right you are, sir. Quentin, Professor and Miss Benbow. Quentin Cotton. How do you do? How do you do? Light or dark blue? Dark. The Oxford blue. We're not going to drink Cambridge in your bath, whatever we do outside. There you are, Holly. They're christened for you. To you, Mr. Holly. Gentlemen, I give you Mr. Holly for his contribution to the art of life. Oh, thank you. Holly. Mr. Holly. Holly. <laughs> Cheer up. Racing at Newbury. Two o'clock. Merry time. Sir Roger. Eager. 2.30. Hegema Hart, Margarita, Jill Starr. Three o'clock, Night Jar, Black Peter, Caravan. 3.30, Jack oh, Tarr. Uh, I beg your pardon, sir. Day flower, room. Good evening, sir. I'm on a room here for a few days. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, would you um, uh, please sign the register, sir? Uh, just, uh, just there, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have you any luggage? No, there only this. Oh, yes. Uh, the, um... The Philip Sidney room, sir, is vacant. I if hear you... you have an Essex room. Uh, yes, sir. Is that vacant? Uh, I'm afraid not, sir. Oh, what a pity. Uh, yes, sir. Great pity. Uh, yes, sir. I see from your register you have a Mr. Elmer Van Buren staying here. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Um, uh, straight up the stairs, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. You never know. That's the end of the racing results for today. <laughs> a magnificent effort, considering the time. It's a most excellent dinner. Your son seems to have found his vocation, Lady Keith. Yes, isn't it nice? All my sons are now settled. All men? How many have you? Seven. And all called after days of the week, of course. And all of them poets? Oh, dear me, no. Sassett is the only one who's given us any trouble. Ah, Keith. That dinner calls for a glass of port. Have you anything drinkable? He should have from Sunday cellar. Why not try something different? 
I've got a surprise for you. Have you ever tasted lamb's wool? Did you hear what he said, Father? Lamb's wool? What I've been experimenting with an old recipe. Added a few things of my own. I need some help, though. I was wondering if you... Uh... Of course. But who can make lamb's wool except lambs? <laughs> Silly boy. It's a very old English drink, Lady Keith. I once tasted it, and I shall never forget it. Great heavens, what's that? It is. Can't be. I do believe it is. Professor Benbow, I don't suppose you remember me, Desiree Horsfell Hughes, but I attended your summer school of poetry in 1924. Of course, you're the authority on the Danish poets, aren't you? Well, I don't know. That... I'm delighted to meet you. Can I introduce you to Lady Keith, Miss Horsfell Hughes, Miss Desiree Horsfell Hughes, and this is Mr. Van Buren. How do you do? How do you do? And this is Mr. Mr. Sedgwick. How do you do? Do come sit down. I'd love to. It is splendid to see you again. I've got so much I want to talk to you about. It's been ages. I've had a most particularly interesting time because I've taken up tremendous study on 16th century poets, you know, and I've made a very, very special study of Campion. I do think he's most awfully interesting. Do you happen to know about Campion? I think he's the most interesting of all of them, as a matter of fact. I, I, I simply can't tell you how interesting I think he is. Hello. Where are you going? To the village hall. Oh, I say, may I join you? Of course, but, uh, uh, Mr. Higgins is taking me, but... I know the kitchen maid's looking for a partner. Tickets two and six, including the buffet. Cold. I shall look forward to seeing you. Good evening. Evening, sir. A couple of sugar higgins. Half and half, of course, as much. Uh... Did you hear me, Higgins? Yes, sir. Oh. And now, uh, certain spices and two eggs. Two eggs, Higgins. Uh, mace, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg. I'll put them in. Good. Three eggs. You're slipping, Higgins. No, sir. Your brother chews his hands, sir. Most cooperative. Good. Well, this probably means sausages for breakfast, but here goes. Of course, in Mrs. Beaton's day, you know, they used to use a dozen. Now a glass of whiskey. Oh, whiskey, that's Holly's department, sir. You know, you really do this sort of thing rather well, don't you? What do you mean, mixing drinks? <laughs> no, the whole thing. Running pubs and making us feel at home. Glad you think I'm good at it. I regard it as rather important. Let me have a go. Here, yeah, not Widdishans, it's unlucky. Anticlockwise. Oh. <laughs> Smells good. What about poetry? Are you writing? Yes, I've just started on something rather big. <clears throat> oh, hello, Higgins. Hello, sir. Holly is inclined to be touchy, sir. He considers drinks his pigeon. Oh, not this drink. Miss Horswell Hughes and Mr. Sedgwick will come alongside, sir. Good. Are they happy? Well, not Mr. Sedgwick, sir. Of course, Nodworthy is supposed to have written the greater part of the mask himself. He stayed a night, you know, in the Essex room here to get inspiration, and the outcome was, of course, pure poetry. He wrote the most exquisite iambic pentel. Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry, but my head is going round and round. Forgive me, Lady Keith. There we go again. And me. And me. And Mr. Sedgwick. <laughs> ah, at last. Oh, wine. Enter the servant of Bacchus with the steaming nectar. Stand by to spice the main bridge. Oh, aye, sir. Of course, this is the traditional ceremony. Yeah. I mean, Would I hope it's not authentic. Yes. Pass me around, will you? Certainly. Shall I pass it along? Here's one for you. And another. What does one toast to in lamb's wool? To drinking. And other lusts of the flesh. To redheads. For crime. To my guests. To the downy pelican. Mm -hmm. To, to, to poetry. Good morning. Will you rush this, please? It's urgent. Hmm. We don't know about rush, miss. Not often we get telegrams here. Well, did you enjoy that instalment? Oh, I'm awfully sorry. I just came in to uh, buy a stamp. And being fond of reading. Only stories with happy endings. That should be right, I think. I can't stand those gloomy Russians. My first husband was a Cossack. 
Did you say your first husband? Perhaps I should have said my only husband. I gave Boris my youth, my faith, everything. After him, nobody mattered. No, I suppose not. You won't say anything of this to Mr. Keith, will you? There's nothing to be ashamed of, but, well, I, I have to make my own living now. Of course, I understand. Oh, I knew you would. You've got such a kind, gloomy face, just like a Russian. I say, have I really? Uh, by the way, perhaps you could tell me. I've always wanted to know about the Cossacks. How do they do this trick of riding under the tummies of their horses? I haven't a clue, I'm afraid. You see, Boris was a foot Cossack. Good morning, sir. All a question of balance, Van Buren. Just watch this. Right! 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 Last! Aha! Too easy. Tell me, this collecting business, what's the idea? You can't take it with you. No, but uh, there is something in possessing beauty while you can. Yes, I know. I met a fellow once who had a Rembrandt. Kept it locked in the cellar and took it out once a year to look at it. Said he bought it off a crook. Obviously stolen goods. He must be mad. Could be. Good morning. Good afternoon. Tell me, who is that egregious nincompoop? I think his name is Williams. He checked in last night. Do they keep lemonade in the bar? Yes, madam. I need a stimulant. Everyone's so clever here. Good morning. Good morning, milady. Oh, how very pretty. What are they? Cocktails, milady. I've never drunk a cocktail, but these are so pretty. Do you think one would hurt me? Uh, put new life in it, milady. <laughs> Delicious. Just like elderberry wine. I've been quite teetotal since dear King Edward's coronation. 9th of August, 1902. How clever of you. I wish I could remember things like that. Ah, well, you see, you should have been a smoker, my lady. A smoker? Oh. If you want to know things, Ellis, mm -hmm. look, all on cigarette cars, all the different series. British mm -hmm. Birds, mm -hmm. Railway Engines, oh. here's a handy series. How to mend a bus pipe. Oh, oh. What kind of a pipe? Oh, any old pipe. Uh -huh. Confound that man, Williams. Put me off my stroke. Lost me the game. <laughs> well, never mind. Thanks, Bert. Ah, tell me, what do you think of this Keith fellow? I like him. Well, I must admit he grows on me like rather a curious kind of ivy. He's very attracted by Miss Benbow. Miss Benbow had better not be attracted by him. <laughs> Why, what have you got against him? <laughs> Read his verses? No, are they that bad? Lamentable. You'd look pretty silly if he turned out to be good. You've got it all wrong. A critic's perfectly safe so long as he condemns everything, good or bad. It's when he begins to praise something that he has to look out for his reputation. <laughs> From what I understand, yours is in no danger. Ah, Joanna. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. I'll see you both at dinner. What have you been up to? Certainly well, Keith has been telling me about his poetry. <laughs> Great heavens. Van Buren likes the fellow. Do you? Well? He's rather sweet. Joanna, I recognize the symptoms and I won't have it. That any daughter of mine should refer to an illiterate puppy as rather sweet. What a nauseating statement. I will not have you casting sheep's eyes at that unlettered buffoon. Oh, keep your beard on, Daddy. You astonish me, miss. You astonish me. Oh, do calm down, dear. Saturday's coming. Since when do you call him Saturday? Since this minute. Hello, sir. I, um... Would you like to drink, Miss Bember? My daughter does not drink. You mustn't mind, Daddy. He's just lost a croquet. Do you play? No, I'm afraid golf's my game. And mine. Oh, I say, do you think we might play? Well, why not? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. Explorers. Mm -hmm. Film stars. Poor dears, always being discovered. <laughs> so embarrassing for them. Famous jewels. Oh, I'm so fond of jewelry. My husband was always taking mine to be mended to a place called Hock. <laughs> oh, look, the Kauai Law, the Hope Diamond. Oh, and Lord Essex, six three. Lord Essex, yeah. Oh, Mr. Van Buren was telling me he stayed here once, you know. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a very large ring, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, I feel so warm. <laughs> I must go and sit in the sun. Oh, well. Oh, may I borrow your album? Well... I'll take great care of it. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, sorry. Is it Thursday or Friday? It's Wednesday. Don't be absurd. Wednesday has a moustache. <laughs> Silly man. <laughs>
decided to investigate you. You're a bit of a mystery, young Nelly. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. What, for trying to take advantage of an innocent redhead? In fact, for taking advantage. Oh! Stop it! Let me go! That was only a sighting shot in the outer at five o'clock. I can improve on that. You have the most beautiful spine I've ever seen. Quentin, you've made things so much easier for me. Now I can trust you and tell you everything. I can trust you. Of course. And you'll help me. Of course. Without reward? Of course, I, I may declare a bonus. No, not now. You haven't heard my story yet. Then tell me. No. No, tonight. Will you meet me at 11 o'clock? by the well. I will. Tonight, then. Oh, hello. Hmm. Just as I thought. Very pretty set-up. Can I help you, sir? Oh, no, no. I, I was just having a look around this lovely old room. Half a world away. Half forgotten now, just cling to me. Half awake, I pray that all the little dreams. Do space. No, I've never been to Bournemouth. I know East Bourne intimately, but not Bournemouth. Three downs. Oh, we met such interesting people there. And Mrs. Silverstein and her sister, Miss Priscilla Littlejohn. They recommended us to come here. They simply raved about Mr. Keene. For hot, did they? I suppose he is attractive if you like that type. Well, from what I could gather from Mrs. Silverstein, she is Mrs. Martin Silverstein, you know. He's quite a menace. Five diamonds. I'm not surprised. There have been rumors. Mrs. Silverstein hinted at quite a scandal. I couldn't get her to be more explicit, but still. Oh, is it my bid? Uh, six diamonds. Double. Well, poets always regard themselves as chartered libertines. Rather shocking, isn't it? <laughs> Seven clubs. I know Priscilla Little Dog. Mr. Keith treated her shamefully. Seven dabs. Double. Redouble. Priscilla Little John's taken to the bottle, I hear. Really? Meg. Such a nice, simple girl, too. And now with the new look, her legs really don't matter. Nice people. <laughs> Charming. No bid, Mrs. Waterhouse. You've contracted to make a grand slam in diamonds, doubled and redoubled. You mind if we now play some bridge? Well. before you saw me. Oh, I, I thought you were a moonbeam. Oh, Nelly. Nelly, you're the loveliest housemaid I ever kissed. And you're the nicest follower I ever had. We came here to talk. Well, we are talking. In between times. No, you're suspicious of me. You must listen. All right, my darling. The night is young. Well... We met in Split. I beg your pardon? Split. Very blue, the Adriatic. I was young and, and lonely. He was experienced, dynamic. You mean Boris? Oh? Oh, oh but... No! Elmer Van Buren. Oh, Elmer Van... Oh, but he's not... He's a collector. 
collected me. I wrote him letters, foolish letters, and he kept them. Now he's trying to blackmail my, my, my father. Your father? Yes, don't ask me who my father is, but if those letters were published, he'd be ruined. See, so when I saw you this morning, you were... Exactly. I was trying to find the letters. Well, let me do it. I'll go in there and biff him oh, one or two. Shh. No, I... I must do this my own way. But, uh, you can help. How? Watch him. Let me know whenever he's not in his room. I'm sure he keeps him there. And above all, don't draw attention to me. Of course, but hasn't he recognized you? Oh, I, I'm keeping out of his way. Anyhow, you, you don't suppose a fiend like that remembers every girl he's deceived? I still think I should biff him on... <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do that. You know, you're really rather sweet. You can um, have that bonus now, if you like. Excuse me, sir. Uh, would you uh, just sign this, please, sir? Thank you. Did you fix it at the food office, Truscott? A very pleasant interview, sir. Good. Good night. Good night, Nelly. Well, I'm just about at it, sir. I'm off to my uncle Ned now. Good night, sir. Good night, honey. Well, I think I'll be popping off now, too, sir. Good night, Trusker. Good night, sir. Ah, the plot thickens. What have you been up to? My lips are sealed. They're a bit pink, too. Hmm? <laughs> Lost you. Good night. Good night, sweet Quentin. And flights of housemaids sing thee to thy rest. <laughs> oh, bad luck. Oh, this rough is hopeless. Never mind, it's an awfully nice wood. <sighs> oh, well. Look. Would you care to marry me? Yes. No. No. I, I mean, no. Uh, why? Well, the usual reason, I suppose. Oh, but I hardly know you yet. Well, think what a chance I'm offering you to get acquainted. Well, that sounds rather like going inside the lion's cage to get a good view of the lions. Honey, Joanna, I'm serious. No, I'm not going to kiss you. I, I'm not going to marry you. I haven't had time to think. Uh, besides, it's so early. It isn't four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Do you start at four? No, I don't start at all. No, I'm not going to kiss you. I'm not going to marry you. I'm never going to marry you, is that quite clear? But even if you don't marry me? I suppose you're not used to opposition. Well, what do you mean? Fairly obvious, isn't it? You look so silly sulking behind this thing. Hey! Let me go. Then will you marry me? No. Why not? Oh, lots of reasons. What about Priscilla Littlejohn? Oh, good heavens. Who the devil told you about her? Never mind. But it seems to be true. Well, even if it is true, it doesn't matter. Well, since you've asked me to marry you, I'd say it does matter. And since you refuse me, it can't matter in the least. Well, of course, if you're content to accept my refusal... Oh, but I'm not. Why do you suppose I asked you? I thought perhaps you might have formed the habit. Listen, I've never proposed to anyone before, and I've certainly never married anyone else. So what difference could it make? A lot of difference. How? Be honest, tell me how. I don't quite know. But I'm not going to let you kiss me again. Not even when we're married. Well, you won't want to then. So we are going to be married. Well, certainly not if you'll never want to kiss me afterwards. But I didn't say well, that. You did, or at least you inferred it. Uh, oh, my head's going round and round. That's what comes of losing it so often. Hey! I'll speak to your father tonight. Oh, blast it. Don't cry, Joanna. I'm sorry, darling. I'm a clumsy idiot, but I do love you. I'm not crying, really, but... Why the Dickens didn't you stay so? <laughs> ah, Higgins. What's the time? The time, sir? Yes, the real time, I mean, not all this bell nonsense. Five, five o'clock, sir. Good heavens, the little monkey's been playing that absurd game since half past two. 
Ah, you're not a golfer, sir. I'm not. I play chess and croquet, and I'm profoundly grateful to say that I'm equally bad at both of them. Games are the curse of our civilization. Can you imagine Shakespeare playing hockey or Goethe playing golf? Uh, Miss Benbow on the port bow, sir. Ah, there you are, my dear. Hello. Good evening, Keith. Good evening, sir. Don't go away, Higgins. I want to talk to you. Aye, aye, sir. See you later. Right. What's happened to your skirt? Well, you see, Daddy, Saturday was chasing me through a wood. The unspeakable satyr, the unmentionable missile. And he made me cry, too. Did he by him? Yes, and he kissed me. Assault and battery. But I made him sorry for it. I told him a few home truths. Splendid. Now he knows exactly what I think of him. Excellent. And what I think is that I'm going to marry him. What? Blood pressure. Ah, that's better. I should have watched my blood pressure. Oh, I enjoy a good rage myself. We all do, but when you get to my age, it's dangerous. Excuse me. What's the matter with him? I don't know. He's the most unsociable fellow. Furtive, too. It's most unfair, but I can't get it out of my mind that because I dislike a man, there must be something wrong with him. A grave error, sir, I agree. But surely it's worse to think that because you like somebody, there can't be anything wrong with him. For instance, this American bloke, Van Buren. You like him? Everybody seems to like him. He's a very likable fellow. Beats me at croquet, and I beat him at chess. Ah, you see? He's fooled you just as he's fooled all the others, but not me. Oh, if I could only tell you. Great heavens, boy, are you insinuating there's something wrong with Van Buren? My lips are sealed. Ooh, blood pressure! You've been maddening the professor. No. What'd you say to him? Well, I just said my lips are sealed and he went off like a bomb. I particularly wanted him in a good mood this evening. What were you talking about? I was warning him against Van Buren. Now, I bet you're going to tell me you like him. Oh, Van Buren, of course I do. Got quite fond of the old boy. Old oh, fiend. Haven't you noticed the look in his eye? What look? This look. Don't do that. That's a good chap. No, honestly, I wouldn't trust him an inch. Not with any girl I knew. I mean, anyone I was fond of, for instance. Nellie Bly, for instance. Well, do you mean to tell me that you think Van Buren's been making a pass at Nellie? Well, no, not exactly. <laughs> oh, steady on, Sandy. This is serious. The trouble with you, old boy, is you've got a bad attack of housemaid's knees. Proceed. Poem by Saturday Keith. Well, don't let me disturb you, Nelly. I was looking for Mr. Keith. Oh, it's quite all right, Lady Keith. I've just finished. I'll do my best, but of course you understand we can't guarantee. And, uh, just a minute. Oh, I beg your pardon, madam. Yeah, yes, uh, I will attend to the matter personally, madam. Nelly. Lady Mercy Cotton is arriving any minute now. Run upstairs and see that her room's all right. She's in the Ben Johnson. In a minute, Mr. Johnson. No, no, no. Hurry along now. Everything must be right for Lady Mercy. Janet to marry me today. I hope she refused you. As a matter of fact, she didn't. Then the girl's a bigger fool than I took her for. No, I don't mean that. Can you get it right? I've nothing against you as a man, but as a poet, I think you're disastrous. Well, if you insist on having a major poet for a son-in-law, Janet's chances of getting married are not so hot. Not so tight! You don't understand what I mean. If a man sets out to do something, I expect him to do it well. You set out to be a poet. But have you succeeded? That seems to be the point. At the moment, I'm a publican rather than a poet, and as far as it goes, rather a successful one. Oh, blast it. Exactly, as far as it goes. But in my opinion, the mere fact that an unsuccessful poet becomes a successful publican is no qualification for marrying my daughter. You don't know anything about my poetry. You laugh at it. You haven't read my last poem. You don't know what it's like. I do, and I know it's good. What do your publishers say about well, it? Well, they haven't seen it yet. So the opinion is entirely your own? Yes. Very well. If you're prepared to stand or fall by this particular poem, I suggest we postpone our discussion until it's published. Then, if competent critics and the general public are on your side, I won't contradict them. So we have to wait for months? Months? 
Dear wife and I were engaged for seven years. Well, that must have been cosy for you. After all, it seems to me that if you're so confident in your ability, I'm the one who's taking all the risks. What do you think? It's all right. I'm afraid I've been rather impertinent. It's not a bad fault sometimes. Now, how about a drink before dinner? You know, I almost hope your poem is a success. You tie a remarkably good bow. Thank you, sir. Really? Oh, Quentin, the very man I was looking for. What in there? No, silly. Quentin, I, I think I've got a clue. That's more than I have. What is it all about? Come and give me a hand. Come down and help me with the costume. I like it. Now, I think that's all. And the jumper, yes. Come along with it. That's right. That's right, Henry. Bring the basket in the hall. Here, hand me what you've got there. Will you now take what you can't manage? I think I'll take that hat. And this. I'll just have a look and see if we've left any. Oh, it's all come under. Here we are, Mr. Last. I thought we'd never make it. Oh, don't bother to introduce yourself. I'll soon find out who you are. You all know me, of course. Where's Mr. Keith? Oh, he's done it. doesn't matter. Here are the clothes. Oh, good. Come on. You all right? Hello, everybody. I say, it is getting exciting, isn't it? <laughs> Hello, Professor. I say, we're counting on you to be one of our courtiers. Like it, I'm Wouldn't sure. it be fun? I borrowed them from the old Vic. They didn't want to lend them. I say, it's been right there. in a short prologue. I don't know whether you happen to be a quick study. Well, I really... Well, I'm sure you managed splendidly. You're dressed as an Elizabethan page. Oh, I say, what fun. Yes, I think it will be. Hello, Mr. Cotton. Good evening. What's the matter with Quentin? Nothing, Mother. You look pale and guilty. I'll see about that later. I've got such good news for you. The vicar's got the mumps and you are Essex. Oh, well, I can't really. <laughs> Mother, you've got to. You've got to. Where's his hair? There. Now, oh, no, wait sure a second, I, I see. Somebody else perhaps could do it. absolutely splendid in this. There. One, two, three. You are Essex. <laughs> Watch my feet very carefully, people. Are you ready? One and two and. One and two and. All together, one and two and. Where's your partner, dear? He'll be here this hour. We can't do it without a rehearsal. I'll take his place. Oh, I'm so sorry. Keep going. Do keep going, Lady Mercy. Keep going. Right. Above. Yes, don't forget we're in the 16th century. Oh, how stupid of you. It's all right. Now look, think, think, concentrate. Now whose hand do I have now? Is this me, Mary? No, 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 keep counting, keep counting. Yeah. Now is everybody smiling because you're very happy, you know? Yes, I'm very happy. It's out of my fault. It's out of my fault. You know, I never have this ready by this afternoon. Never mind, Miss Erie, it looks quite finished. Did it really? Oh, good. Well, I think we have another go now. Come on, everybody, start right again. Are you ready? Go. Most royal sovereign. Essex bends his knee in loving homage. At your slender feet, he throws his heart. But one glance from your eye, his pulse makes sudden thunder in his ears. And a deep sigh uprises from his breast. I say, have I got to utter this utter bosh? Oh, cheer up, Quentin. You look very pretty. Well, the clothes fit, thank him. What's going on in here? Can you spare a minute? In very sooth, my lord, right willingly. <laughs> How do I look Saturday? Come into the office and I'll tell you. All right, now keep going, keep going. Are you looking happy to walk with me? Man, come on, I'm standing I've got a tip for you. A tip, sir? Confidence trick. Confidence trick. 3.30. 33 to 1. <laughs> Here's a five. I have a bit. Oh. I split my winnings with you if you telephone my bookie at Regent 66777. Regent 20 pounds six. to win. 20 pounds. Uh, do it from the public bar, will you? I don't want anyone here to get it. Very good, sir. <laughs> I've got a surprise for you. Shut your eyes. Oh, all right. Now, come over here. Stand there. No peeping. <laughs> what the? What's the matter? Oh, my, my pen, it's gone. I left it here last night. Somebody's taken it. Oh, no, Saturday. Well, I put it in here. Only copy. Perhaps you took it upstairs. Well, I'm sure I didn't. We'll go and look. Here. You've been behind my bar. Me? You. I haven't been near it. Oh, sir. Not just now, honey. But, sir. Oh, Mr. Quentin, sir. You know my cocktail recipe? It's gone. It's been stolen, sir. Have you searched Mr. Van Buren? Mr. Van. You're joking, sir. I wish I could get my hands on that tea leaf.
Ah, Mr. Williams, you've made a discovery. May I look? Could you write it again from memory? Not a chance, the 12,000 words bit. You don't say. Harry, what's going on in there? Good heavens, it's the missing glove. How thrilling. Where on earth did you find it? Ask Williams. In here. Oh, well, I'll be... Those were there, too. I've got an idea. Why don't you wear them? Can I? Why, it's the perfect touch. We'll go and get the other one. Oh, but that'll be your point. Well, it can't be far. We'll find it later. Transformed into a queen, she clasped Lord Essex in divine embrace, while Gloriana slept her maiden sleep in violet, while heaven stood on guard and all the stars came out as sentinels. My Lord Essex. Most royal sovereign. Essex bends his knee in loving homage. At your tender heart, he throws his feet. <laughs> At one throb. At one throb from your pulse, his ears make bitter thunder in his eyes. And a deep breast uprises from his thighs. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mr. Sedgwick, you missed your entrance. My brother Philip's messenger on horse. What is the news he brings us with such haste? Come on, Mr. Sedgwick, let me help you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Where is my brother's messenger on horse? What was the news he brings us in such haste? Don't wash me, I'm rich, I'm frightfully tight. The horseman should come now. Alas, his horse is taken queer, and foaming lies without. To a meet, to meet the gentleman without. What on earth's happened? Beastly horse won't budge. How oh, ghastly. Hello, Nelly. Enjoying it? Say something. <clears throat> of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the earth beneath. What on earth has happened? Set on back, Miss Cedric. That's the idea. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, I have no idea. Oh, oh Mr. Cedric. That's the idea. <laughs> oh, Sam, has been telling me about that glove. How terribly exciting. May I hold it? Yes. <gasps> Oh, look at that jewel in the ring. They're both covered with jewels. Miss Benbow, do you collect cigarette cards? No. Oh, I... you should. May I borrow it to compare it with something? Yes, of course. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, hello. Good afternoon, Miss Benbow. Aren't you out watching the mask? Never mind, then. Is that a bottle that contains vitriol? Unless you do exactly as I say, I shall be obliged to throw the contents in your very charming face. What are you playing? Walk to Mr. Cotton's car. I and my little bottle will accompany you. I'll get going. Quiet! 
sound out of you and I will use this. Now then, get in. Oh no, you don't. Joanna Benbow away in Quentin's car. He seems to be threatening her. Oh, no, Priscilla, just... Well, true. Tell the others to follow. <laughs> tell the others to follow. What? Mr. Williams. Oh! Oh! Stop! Stop! Oh, dear, oh, dear. Please, stop. It's Mr. Williams. He's a with Joanna in Quentin's car. What? Mr. Williams has threatened her. Oh, Nelly? Oh, no, no. Joanna. That is, Nelly, I... Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, darling, you're ill. I'm not, I'm not. Go and see. The cars have gone, I tell you. And Joanna. Oh, Mr. Williams. Gone. And Nelly. <laughs> Mr. Cedric, where have you been? I'll see you later. You met a bit of horror this afternoon. What's going on down there at the Downey? It's Miss Bembo. She's been kidnapped. Ah. Oh. Hey? It's Miss Bembo. She's been kidnapped. <laughs> Travelling at 60 mile an hour. That's a bit fast for a build-up area. Don't you understand? Miss Bembo might be murdered by now. <laughs> Driving to the public danger at that speed. Sorry, Mr. Higgins. I'll have to take your name. What is it? Step on in, please! Step on in! Hey, oh, sorry. Can't you get this perambulating matchbox to go a bit faster? Well, I've got my foot right down, Professor. Oh, blimey. Bastards. Get a move on, you idol. Far left. Why don't you keep to the right side of the road? Oh, she's all right. Are you all right, miss? Oh, she's all right, all right. It's a miracle she's all right, though, isn't it, though? There's anything we can do, miss. Are you sure you're all right? I'm all right. All right, come on. She's all right. Let's go. All right. All right. Mr. Williams, is this some sort of ridiculous joke? Oh, no. No, I'm a criminal, Miss Bimbo. A high-class criminal. Gloves? Yes, yes, the glove which was found in the Essex room this afternoon. Well, I don't understand. May I have it, please, Miss Benbow? I haven't got it. I don't want to have to use force, my dear young lady. But I haven't. There. Oh. Where is it? Where is it? I don't know. Lady Keith had it. You wanted to... Lady Keith!
Oh, Saturday. Did he hurt you? No, no, I'm all right. But hurry, we must get back to the pelican. He's after the ring. Oh, what ring? Never mind. Come on, I'll tell you what to do. As I were saying, it's no excuse. Now, look you here. Say you and I have been you was a long urgent time. business. Here he goes. It's him. He's alone. Huh? All goes like a running jumper, Chester. Here, come back here. I think that horse of ours... Where's, where's Lady Keith? Uh, well, uh, come on, well, then. Where's Lady Keith? She, she's in her room, sir. <laughs> Lady Keith. The Tudors, whose emblem is the rose. A combination of roses of York and Lancaster. Lady Keith. Add to these herbs such spices as the Here, where's Mr. Williams? He went up to see Lady Keith. Well, come on, quick. Come, what? Come. Oh, oh, it's murder. She's dead. I hope not. I'm going back to look for my daughter. Oh. Well, mind the bodywork. And I'm getting short of juice. I hope you've got some. Ooh. Come on, oh, take it oh, easy. Oh. Oh. Everything's under control, my lady. Excellent. Where's Lady Keith? She's upstairs, my lady. She's all right. Oh, only she's been drugged. Drugged? Uh, I'll deal with you later. Oh, now then. Now oh, then. Oh, then lend us a hand. All right, Mr. Truscott. You leave it to me. Ah, Joanna. Thank heavens you're safe. Yes, I'm all right. Get me out of this mobile sardine Where's kit. Where's Williams? Oh, no. Now, where is he? Well done, Higgins. Good for you. I caught him in your mother's room, sir. My mother? Is she all right? Well, she's all right now, sir. No, thanks to this here parish. She was drugged. Oh, don't blame me. She was like that when I got here. Ah! Hold him, hold him. After him, Professor. That's the idea. Go on after him. I mean, you can go faster than that, can't you? Don't be an old fool, Eddie. Wait, I want to talk to you. There's no time now. I must go. Why? Because I'm a journalist, huh? and I think I can see a front page story in this. A journalist? Helen Blysdale of the Picture Mail, at present writing a picture called Ancient Inns of England. Excuse me. No! My child! Oh! Don't be an old fool, sir. Oh. All right, we can manage now. Salacious beast! Now, what about that ring? Oh, search me. I mean, literally, if you want to. I intend to. I admit I was after the ring, but someone was ahead of me. Who? Uh, may I take it that I'm free to go now? It's a little matter of kidnapping. Yes, by him. Don't, Daddy. It was all a mistake. Mistake by foot. Well, if I tell you who has got the ring, will you let me go? Yes. Right. It was Van Buren. Nonsense! Oh, I told you he was a fiend. Isn't that so, Nelly? Shh. Now I hear my name taken in vain? Ah, there you are, Keith. Sorry to leave you at this time, but I've just had a cable. My partner's a rather sick man, and I've got... Very sorry to see you go, sir. Well, ask him if he minds being searched. Yes. Do you mind? Don't be an ass, Quentin. Well, this is absurd. Williams obviously stole the ring and has hidden it somewhere. Since you arrived, nobody's mentioned a ring. How did you know it was stolen? <gasps> oh, I yeah. say. Goth! Vandal! Hum! All my life I've searched for this jewel. Every clue was followed up. Every rumor traced to its source. And I learned it was here in the Essex room. I know you won't understand, Professor, but it is possible in your life there are things you value more than honesty. And in yours too, Keith. Even though you wouldn't sell the ring. It isn't mine to sell. It belongs to history. Now you'd better go. But aren't you going to have him arrested? No. Thanks. Wise of you. The scandal wouldn't have done any of us any good. Now, either you're off duty or you're on duty. If you're off duty, the public bar's round the corner, and if you're on duty, where's your warrant? Uh... 
<laughs> Come on. Hello. Come on, Trusty. Thank you. Let's me out, isn't it? Small pot. Holly, a glass of brandy for Lady Keith. Oh, swords, sir. Maybe two. I can do with one myself. Damn difference. <laughs> <laughs> Holly, here is your album. Thank you, madam. Thank you so much. It really is the most interesting book. The cards have lovely pictures on the front and instructions on the back on how to make things. Mr. Holly made up such a lovely drink from series 38, number 18. I think he called them blue cocktails. Now, sir, we've got to get something settled once and for all. Have we, Keith? What's that? Keep calm now, dear. Saturday night, I've made up our minds. Yes, and it's quite obvious after what happened today that she needs someone to look after her. She's got beard? Yes, and a fat lot of good you are. She's constantly being kidnapped and abducted under your very beard. What? Oh, wait a minute. I agreed to wait until my poem is published. Thought at the time it was a fatuous thing to do. Now, there is no poem until I've written another one. So again, get married. Poem or no poem. Thief! Hun! Vandal! Goth, dear. Thank you, darling. Goth! A hypocrite. There you were, standing like a... Uh, Buddha. Nonsense, child. Buddhas always sit. Uh, clasping your things. <laughs> Mary, are you really a journalist? Quentin, you don't think I'd tell you a lie, do you? Don't look at me like that. Now listen, Nelly. You and I are going to have a nice long chat. I want to hear all about Saturday's poem and Van Buren. Oh, and Boris, of course, and Split and the picture mail and why you're masquerading as a housemaid. Quentin, you're a beast and a cheat. And after that, darling, we'll talk about other things. Your eyes, for instance. And that innocent look you put on when you're just going to tell a complete whopper. Now, about that poem. Well, I was out in the garden and... Well, suddenly something whizzed past my head. The Earth is the ship, tell us, sailing through space. That's a very good idea. And space is the sea. That accounts for the use of the Alexandrines dragging their slow length along. You've got it, the slow surge of the sea. And the heroic couplets, of course. Daddy, yes, is dear? this a good poem? Good? It's a major work. If it weren't, I wouldn't be discussing it. It shows tremendous promise. Now, as I was saying, Keith, what is it, Joanna? Daddy, you and Mother were engaged for seven years. Seven happy years. Well, Saturday and I are getting married in seven weeks. So do you mind if we start now? What? Seven weeks? Well, yes, of course. <laughs> Look. I mean, it might have been so very much more. Oh, it was a lover and his lass, with a hay and a hoe and a hay on him. Desiree. No. <laughs> <laughs>